I'm gonna sit over here. <laughs> no, um, like I said again, um, I'm really, really excited. Uh, this is my first year with the organization, but as Liz said, I do have an extensive background in youth development over 13 years. I know I look so young, right? <laughs> but, um, I, I really know what I'm doing when it comes to working with youth and groups and you know, creating the fun camp environment, an exciting environment that we aim to have for you all. Uh, I think Camp Achieve is about being supportive, about learning all that they can about what's going to happen in their bodies, in their lives, about being encouraging, about being safe, and just having a lot of fun. And so when we sit down and we create these, these templates and these schedules and we think about what we want to do for the youth, we think about what, meeting them where they are. And so I'm so glad that Liz signed me up for this, this task right here because it's been really personal. Um, I, as you guys know, I look at all the records. I contact your neurologist every day. I look at the same names over and over, and to be able to put the faces of the parents to the and now seeing the kids, it's like amazing. And so we just really, I really can't wait to get into the camp and really show them what we have to offer. So before we begin camp, um, we have to have counselors, and so I want to tell you all that every single counselor, every single counselor has to be in compliance with the state. So we have to make sure that we have background checks on each individual, including ourselves. Myself, Sue, Liz, we all go through the same three. Child abuse, uh, criminal, and FBI, okay? If they don't clear it, they don't work with us. So you can feel safe and secure that your children are with the best professionals today, all right? Um, and a little bit, I want to kind of go over a little bit of rules. Raise your hand if you've already read your camper information packet. It's okay if you haven't. I'm not reading the spot. It's okay. It's like class. Who read the book last night? No, it's okay though. It's okay. <laughs> but um, I just want to kind of go over like a few rules. Touch, touch, tongue in cheek. You know, I know we're all grown here, so I don't have to like read word for word. But kind of like go over a few things that, you know, we think that is important for you to know in case you don't get a chance to sit down and look through the whole packet before August. I mean, you guys have a lot to do, right? I'm sure you have a lot lots of chores and other kids and other things that you're doing. So I'll be helpful today and we'll go over a few things so we can kind of be on the same page when you do arrive at camp. First things first, no cell phones, all right? Please, we try, we try, we try to keep the cell phones off the premises because we're in a day age of technology and all the kids are at different stages, but the preteens will be there and the Facebook and the social media and all those things. And those things are great, but we just want to give them one week where they can disengage from their normal every day. And they can feel like they're somewhere away from all the chaos of the world. And they can really engage and focus and make, make new friends and not feel afraid or text, hey, I don't want to really be here. You know, we just want them to feel like they're part of the experience. So if you guys can help us out with that, that'd be great. If you must get in contact with us, you will have our phone numbers, we will have phones there, so you will be able to contact your youth. If they need to call you for any reason, they also will be allowed to do so. But if we kind of all come together and take a stand against that, then we can really create the maximum, the maximum experience that you know they deserve, I think, right? All right, so another thing, um, all campers that come to the camp have to be able to perform um, activities of daily living. Can anyone kind of explain Maybe what they think that is. Do you guys know? Does anybody know? Showering. Brushing yes. teeth. Showering, brushing teeth. Dressing. Dressing. You know, of course, some somebody you know may have. May, maybe your child may not be able to use one arm or something, and they may need help with you know button and something small. That's that's something totally different. Let me speak my case. But in in the case of you know a child that may need a lot more help getting ready in the morning, because we get up. Everyone gets up early, so we try to get all the kids in bed at a good time. We try. It's camp. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm? Yeah. <laughs> um, well, breakfast is around what, 8, 9 o'clock? So we start, we, start <laughs> med we start medication um, times at 7 o'clock. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, then we have breakfast at 8 and then activities. So we just want to make sure that we can really, like I said, meet the youth where they are. So we don't want anyone feeling bad if they came to certain things and you know take away from their own experience. So we just really try to accept youth who can do all of those things. Brush your teeth, shower. We're good on that, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, great. <laughs> all campers uh, must always, always be accompanied by a staff member or a counselor. So we will not have youth roaming around by themselves 
um, unsupervised. Supervision is a big thing, I think, for all of us, right? Because if we blink an eye, something can happen, mm -hmm. and we don't want to miss a thing. Mm -hmm. We want to make sure we're on point. So everyone, all your youth will always be supervised. And we have a uh, two, two to one ratio. So two, to, two or three to one, okay? Mm -hmm. So I think that's a pretty decent ratio. I've been in places where the ratio was 12 to one. Okay, so that tells you about the level of care that we're trying to provide here for youth. Um, and, and by state law, school age children is about 12 to 1. So mm -hmm. this is really a really good ratio that we have here. Um, so in the, in the um, cabins, we have bunk beds. Mm -hmm. So I know kids love bunk beds. They get excited and all that, right? They're going to sleep on the bottom bunk. That's <laughs> all. Oh, all right. Yeah, you guys are excited too. Yeah, yeah, all yeah, the yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we do this for safety reasons, okay? We do this because what if they have a seizure and they're in the top bunk? You know, we want to be able to get to them as quickly as possible. We have walkie talkies, I mean, we're in it. We're like, what? Sure, sure. What's up? You know what I'm saying? You know, and um, someone is always on call at night, you know, for the, so when everybody was asleep, it's not like they're walkie talkie, somebody's walkie talkie is on. Medical personnel, staff, and in every activity that we do, our medical personnel does attend those activities as well. So there's never a moment where you can feel like, what if someone doesn't know what to do if this happens? Someone will know. We make sure of that. It's very important to us. Okay? Um, in, well, there will be swimming. There will be boating, water activities. However, if you've indicated on your application that you do not authorize that for your youth, then they will not participate in that particular activity. So we do uh, respect that. However, if they, while they are, um, it's, while they are engaging in these activities, we also will have all staff present, medical professionals, all those things again. So there's no worry. What if, you know, no. No what ifs, guys. That week, go home, chill, leave it to us, okay? <laughs> I know it's easier said than done for others. Yes. Um, we will have snacks available throughout the day. We don't have air conditioning in the cabins. This is definitely camp camp, not like modern age camp. But there is one building, one house where there is air conditioning. That's uh, kind of like where the nurse's station is and certain things happen in there. So if something happens to your, your child, they have a seizure, and they may need to cool off, and need to go in there for a little bit, we'll make that happen. Um, but overall, they will be in the regular camp environment inside of the cabins with their friends. Um, no alcohol, no, no drugs, <laughs> nothing illegal. We'll be on the premises. But we, okay, you laugh. But we have to say, you know, because, I mean, it goes without a doubt. And it goes for all of us, not just the youth, mm -hmm. you know. Sometimes adults, we might think we could sneak a little something, something. If the night gets a little rough, it cannot happen here. All right? Uh, so. Drugs. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, <clears throat> this might seem so silly, but please, guys, chewing gum is not permitted at the camp. Do not let them chew the gum. Look, look, mom, oh, mom, my open, mouth is open. I told you guys. Look, mom, look, it's okay. It's okay, mom. That's why we do this today. Because you know why you're in a car. Mom, can I have a piece of gum? Take that gum right out before you get out that car. And don't give them anything extra. Check the pockets. Mm -hmm. Because we don't want the gums to stick to the bunk beds and encourage rodents to come into these cabins. I mean, it's not like it's a five-star hotel, guys. Like, come on, let's be realistic, you know? We're in nature. So we want to make sure we, we respect nature and we respect the place that we're going, which is Camp Greenland, which is an awesome camp, by the way. I had such a great time there for the Young Adult Retreat. But, you know, overall, those are some of the, the house rules. Um, and also, just appropriate behavior is really expected from the campers. So really communicating and speaking with your youth and letting them know how to kind of interact and behave. Um, you know, just having a little talk, you know, like, hey, you know, you're going to camp. Um, and you know, this is what you maybe expect. And if you ever feel like this, instead of doing this, that you do at home, please do this. <laughs> you know, so everyone knows their kids. Everyone knows what is a, a trigger for them. Um, but we also know how to really be great communicators. And that's why we count on you all as the parents to really express those things to them and let them know that this is not going to be tolerated because we do have uh, disciplinary actions if things do happen. So I'm going to tell you about them really quickly, okay? All right, so. Benji, before you yeah. say that, I just wanted to, um, hopefully you've all noticed that your profile that was nice and pretty at 100% once you were accepted kind of jumped yeah, down. A little bit. But, and that's because we asked additional things. One of the things we added 
um, a couple of years ago is we ask you about kind of what uh, what upsets your child, what are signs that they're upset because we understand that you know not all kids have amazing coping skills so right. we also want to be in tune with yeah. you know if there's a kid who's normally talking a mile a minute and all of a sudden they're you know kind of hiding behind their friends well okay wait that means this is going on yeah. and maybe i need to ask them about their favorite teddy bear mm -hmm. um so that you know that's some stuff that please be as honest as possible because yes. it helps us train our counselors and learn ourselves to ensure that we you know you know we're supporting your kids as best as possible mm -hmm. to help them with that um, create a safe environment and i love that she said that because kind of to piggyback off of what she said we're not going to force your children to do anything they don't want to do you know but we are there to help them encourage them but there are times that they may not feel comfortable because of a certain activity because of the trigger for something else and if we know all these things by reading their files then we can help them transition better into maybe another activity or help them become more comfortable so kind of back and tracking a little bit before um, Liz jumped in to kind of uh, disciplinary action if we need to go there, which I don't think we will this year. Not often. I think we're going to have a lot of fun. But just in case we do, just to let you know that these things will happen, um, we, when, if something happens, we'll issue a warning from a counselor and we'll document. So we believe that we should document every single thing. You know, don't you want to see, if I say something happened, you know, your child did something, you want to know when it happened, how it happened, who was around, so you can kind of better assess what's, what's going on, right? Um, and if we need extra assistance, you know, they can come to the to our staff, we can work with the counselor. Oh, we have someone coming through. Hi. 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 Uh, if there is a second warning that's issued out, um, then we can take further action, maybe a timeout for the day, and we just we have to make a decision. Um, a third issue may result in them having to leave camp a little early, okay? Nobody wants that. Some of you guys are coming from very far, you know? Um, but just point blank period, nobody wants that. We don't want to ruin experience for the child. Um, even though sometimes they may ruin their own experience, depending on, you know, it's, it's all about choice. So we, we want to make that clear to all our youth, you know, you could have a good day, you could have a bad day, you can make the right choice, you can make the wrong choice, but we're willing to, all, all of us, our staff are willing to work with the child, each and every one of them, so we don't have to get to that third step. We don't have to do all that yet. Then, I'm sorry, quick question, you said the first one was a warning. A warning, um, and writing will you, documentation. Right, We you call, like, there's no need. Okay. Just a warning for the for the youth. No, no, I. I'm just gonna warn that you call their parents to let them know. Hey, this is like. I mean, yeah. hey, this it, is it kind warning, of depends what it is happening. because if the second warning is something that's not related to the first warning, <laughs> it's kind of like a still like a new, it's a different case. You know, I think it all depends what it is. Um, like I said, we try not to bother you that week because we can handle these things. We have all types of professionals in the room. I'm. A, no? I'm scared. That's scared me. I'm on the donor list, so I can't miss a phone call. That's why I'm so loud. I got you. I got your badge. Let me get that one here. Um, but yeah, like I said, it's not about rushing to call the parent. It's not about even keeping things from you, because we're going to give you all the information once you come back, when you pick them up. We're going to tell you everything that happened that week. We keep a record of everything. We don't hold anything from you. You know, I, I would just not, not saying like, I work with kids mm -hmm. on a daily basis also, so I right. know sometimes it's a little easier. Hey, not to, I mean, even when like, sometimes. not to worry, you know, so I just didn't know that was maybe and an if, option or not. And if that's something that you would want, because I think every parent knows their youth. So I mm -hmm. think that if you know, like, hey, if this gets, if she does happen to do this, then please call me. Mm -hmm. then, it's, okay. then that's something different. But if it's something that we can handle, we got okay. you, girl. Mm -hmm. oh, Getting yeah. to the question with the second incident of the same type. And Second to the same you time. You know the child. If that's the third time, the child might be asked to go home. Yeah. And the parent might not want to get a call on the third time. Hey, you need to go and pick right. up your child. I think. I think. Yeah, I think that's a legitimate question. I think it's also by case, case by case. I think it's about what they do. You know, versus like if someone hits a kid with a with a balloon. You know, I'm not gonna like call mom because of that. I think it, it, it depends on the extent, the measure, you know, I think that we can gauge that. We know what's serious, you know, we know what's okay. This is your second warning, but you know you're wrong, you know, like, so I think it just depends, but 
that's something we can further discuss, I think, with my team, um, something to look at. I think that that's a great question that you brought up. And I think historically, it's been very rare we've had right. to mm -hmm. um, send a child home. And we usually do, we usually are able to have a conversation with a parent before that mm -hmm. point. There have been instances where it's, it's clear pretty quickly that a child um, just wasn't wasn't ready, you mm -hmm. know, and things and and those kind of it escalates to that point where you're realizing this isn't a safe environment for this child or the other children, and sometimes you know in those situations we're not able to communicate with the parent ahead of time because it happens quickly. Mm -hmm. But right. we will do our best to not have it be like a complete shock yes if things are <laughs> if the hand. week is not going well and it's right. looking like you know it, it might not be the best thing for this kid to be here mm -hmm. um we're going to work with you guys we're going to work with them but yes. as, as Bintu said sometimes sometimes these you know these warnings are things that happen and and it, we know this kid's not going to get sent home but they we need to kind of go through the protocol so yes. that they understand that we're serious I mean, and that's effective Exactly. Yeah. Okay. You know, I said yeah. I just feel you know sometimes like I got my first warning. I'm pretty sure you let the kids know what's going on. Mm -hmm. So I got my first warning. I really don't want to be here. So I'm gonna be my second one. I really don't want to be here. So now I got my third warning. So it's more or less like sometimes kids are self sabotage kind of you know. Right. They're really in tune with, with like oh I, I've already seen it. I don't want to be here. Uh, they don't. <laughs> but they don't know that yeah. unless you tell them that this is the step by step process. They we're not. Oh, gonna, just, no, okay. we don't tell them that this is what's gonna. Oh, like, okay. we just. You know, but okay. and that's why I think we won't focus so much on the disciplinary because I think they're okay. gonna have a, a great week. But yeah, you know, yeah. I get what you're saying. I feel you. I understand completely. Um, preparing them for the week ahead. How many of you have already started preparing? Nah, you yeah. shouldn't be. All right. The bags, the bags, the bags. Mom was like, I have the bag. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Does that count? Yeah. 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 <laughs> but when we think about preparation, I think that a lot of times we think only in terms of packing the right stuff, like mm -hmm. the meds, the clothes, stuff like that, right? But there's other things that we think that we that parents should do to kind of help them help the lead. Is that a word? Help, help you no. Know, transition into the uh, camp experience. Um, and one of the things that we um, suggest is, you know, getting them into doing more physical activity, going outside, playing a little bit, um, interacting socially. If your child is one of the children who may not do well in large social um, environments, maybe have been home a lot lately, get them out a little bit, you know, with other kids, do, do small things, small activities, um, um, get them on a school schedule. Because right now, summertime, maybe some of your kids are getting up at what, 11 o'clock, 10 mm -hmm. o'clock? The week before camp, perhaps start waking them up earlier to get their bodies ready for it. Mm -hmm. So those those type of prep things, you know, talking to them, getting them excited, getting their minds ready, their bodies ready, everything ready. So that's something that we can do, right? Good I just yeah. want to add. As yes. In um, as far as that goes, also keep them out, keep them active, get them away from the screens a little bit yeah, literally. because we have really full days yes. and they're going to be out and yes. busy. Um, Very busy. So we're, you know, <laughs> want to they need to know that up a little bit. As we're talking, please take one and pass one. I'm so sorry, guys. But this is the same thing. I'm just like, some of the uh, stuff from the camper list, if you just mm -hmm. want to go through it. I have my own phone. Thank you, Sue, uh, for that. Um, but that's, that's, that's good enough for that. Um, we have a prank disclaimer. Um, <laughs> we love pranks. Who doesn't love a good prank, right? <laughs> um, at camp, because camp is so much fun, we do allow a uh, room for fun activities, such as a fun prank here and there. However, in the past, a prank has gone too far. And so we are definitely making sure that the pranks that we do now are fun but safe. No one gets hurt, um, it's not personal, there's no attack on another youth, there's no bullying going on, things like that. So the counselors, they know, well they will, be, and the ones who have um, been in camp before, they already know how it goes, but the new camp counselors will be taught, you know, the proper protocol for conducting a safe, fun prank. So if your kids come home and say, mom, these are prank, whatever, it's okay, we're allowing pranks, but it's a structured type of prank. You forget what I'm saying, you know, uh, maybe, to the cabin. Each cabin has their own little fun thing that they do. But um, it's nothing that we're not encouraging anything that, that they get hurt, nothing dangerous, nothing too crazy. Um, but pranks are fun. Mm -hmm. It's a fun part of being a kid, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Like last year, one of the, the girl cabins, they went up 
maybe like 15 minutes before med time, before the morning med time, and they sang really loud to one of the boy cabins, you know, thinking, we're going to wake everybody up, and, you know. So we, we try to encourage the fun, things that are fun and not... Um, good memory. Yeah. yeah. Great memory. Good memories. Memories. They're going to come back like never before. I guarantee you guys. They're going to come back so changed. You're going to be like, what did we do? And you know me, I have the maggots to touch. I got the maggots, they're going to love it, all right? All right, let's get into more what camp is like, the daily daily living, daily life. If you go to the back of this information packet, you can see like a mock schedule. That's like a, a day of camp. Look at, just look at that schedule, right? Look how packed that schedule is. And we do have built-in free time for the youth, don't think that we're just gonna have them working like robots all day. There is time for them to relax and, and cool down and things like that because we recognize that they need that, you know? But we also recognize that we only have, it's like condensing a, a fun boatload of summer activities in one week, you know? So, I mean, it's, it's powered up, it's charged up. So, they're gonna be charged up. Um, as I mentioned earlier, in two to three ratio, two, two or three kids to one counselor ratio, and the counselors will have an orientation. They come up a day before the campers, and we give them an extensive orientation which they learn about each camper. They, we don't give them any medical records. We do not hand them any documents, but we tell them what they need to know to make sure that the week is successful with each youth. Okay? Um, we also have walkie talkies. We have golf carts. So if we need to get somewhere fast, something happens, or we need to, you know transport somebody that may have fallen down during activity or had a seizure, we can do that. We have a couple of golf carts. And I I have a golf cart license. And at night time we have one staff, two nurses on call for emergency. So the walkie talkie is on. There's no reason why we wouldn't know if anything happened. And then inside of the cabins, our counselors are aware of things happening. And like Liz said, a lot of them have epilepsy, so they know what's going on, you know? Um, and cabins are divided by age group, yes. Um, but we believe in not only just keeping youth in within their age group, but to also conduct activities with mixed age groups because, you know, the old teach the young, the young show the old a little bit of stuff too. And it's fun, um, and it's that peer-to-peer a uh, mentoring relationship that we like to see happening. So we also have rings. So when you when we do have the schedule, you, like the back of the schedule says green rings. So the kids also are grouped for their activity, not their cabin, by ring. So mm -hmm. if it's ring, if it's a green ring, these are the activities they'll be doing, right? So and it's a mixed age group when they're conducting these activities. So they're not going to always be with their cabin people all day. That's not going to happen. They're going to be able to meet a lot of different types of young people of all different ages. And I think it's fun. I think it helps the young people look up to have. Um, and also, uh, we're going to have a lot of fun activities, OK? I think that that's my favorite part of, of Thanks, Gaines. Thanks. Sorry. My favorite part, my favorite part of camp is uh, making the, acti putting the, the activities together because we have so many different types of individuals that come to volunteer with us. Um, like right now, we're speaking with someone that works with WWE that wants to come do some activity. I mean, yeah, don't you want to come? Look at that. He's like, mm -mm, what's this? You know? Uh, we have yoga. We have, I mean, a collab with a psychologist and a sociologist from Chop. They do activities. We have snack attack. I mean, we have so many fun activities for them. I mean, I wish I was a kid. You know, <laughs> swimming, archery, pool. I mean, it's everything is there, and it's like being on. At Camp Green Lane, um, you really forget that, you know, about the city life. You know, you really just get so immersed in the nature aspect and all the fun things around. And, I mean, it just blew my mind. I, I had never experienced anything like this coming from an inner city. So, this is definitely something that you should be getting your kids hyped. Like, mom is hyped. You hyped? I'm hyped. Yeah. <laughs> um, and um, all of our snacks, we are encouraging healthy snacks. So, we're not, like giving out candy and stuff like that, you know. Um, we will have a party and, you know, a dance, but everything that we try to do for the youth, it has to be good for them, you know. That's really important to us, and that's why I really like working with the uh, Epilepsy Foundation because um, I think that they're just very intentional about what they're trying to do for the community, um, and that means adults and youth, 
And um, I've really seen that here. Um, and also the counselors and nurses, they will help with special diets. If there's anybody in here who has a young person that's like on a ketogenic diet or anything like that, please um, let us know because we want to make sure that they eat well during that week. You know, they have to have three meals a day. They have to be strong and ready. It's going to be hot, hot, hot out there. We both know this. Like August is a hot month for summer. So please let us know. Don't miss a beat. Um, any allergies, please let us know if you have not already. Um, it's a nut-free environment. No worries there. We're not getting anything with peanuts, no chocolate with peanuts, none of that. Okay? Um, and also we have fruit snacks, fruit and snacks that will be available all day in the White House. Okay? But there will be no eating in the cabin. So please remind you to use that. Don't bring anything out of the cafeteria and sneak it in the cabin. I know sometimes kids might say, I just need a snack at night. I just, need, I just needed something. That's me. I'm the big kid that does that. Sneaking candy and chips in my pocket and I'm eating and crumbs in the bed. Again, we want to uh, keep that out of the cabins because we don't want rodents. That's the worst thing possible. Okay, guys? So again, I want to leave you with some tips. I hope I'm not talking your ear off. This is, this is a good conversation, even though I'm the one talking. <laughs> because I see you're listening, so this feels good for me. Um, <laughs> um, tips for you guys, again, check your packing list. There's a packing list in here. And this is the same thing that I emailed you, so it's okay if you lose this paper. You can always check your email, and if you can't find it in your email, you can always call me at the Epilepsy Foundation. I'm there morning, noon, and night. Joking. I'm there till mm -hmm. 5 p.m. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, but you can call me and I will resend it to you. But it's in here. Check the packing list. Bring as much as you need to bring to make sure it's a comfortable week for them. But not overdo it. This is don't bring Louis Vuitton suitcases. I don't want to see like three or four. Okay. <laughs> Let's keep it low maintenance a bit. Um, also, remember, no cell phones. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and also, this is very important. Lice lifters will be there. So, when you arrive at camp for registration, we will be checking each and every young person for lice. <laughs> Who thinks that's a bad idea? <laughs> no one does, right? We're on the same page, right? <laughs> Perfect. Now, of course we know nobody's going to have lice when they come. It's going to be all good. But in the case that it may happen that someone has lice, you won't, don't feel bad. No one else is going to know your dirty little secret like me, right? <laughs> Except for me. I'm just kidding, just kidding. But uh, lice lifters will be there. And if you want them to um, kind of like take care of that right then and there so that the youth can stay for camp, it's going to cost two seventy-five dollars on the spot. Now, you can choose to go home and do your own treatment and hopefully and, and get it, make sure the doctor checks it out, bring a doctor's note, say there's no lice and all of that. But that's taking a chance. So just be prepared for anything. It's 275 and then we'll be there. Okay? And also don't be offended because everyone's getting checked. Right? So don't feel like me. <laughs> yes. All of us. So, um, and also, Sue will talk about meds. There's a little bit more in-depth information than that. I'm not qualified for that round, but Sue will hold you guys down with that. Uh, you guys are more than welcome to come down for the talent show. We're going to have a talent no, show. No, 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 no. 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 Oh, There's yeah. a talent show, but we don't. Oh, no, the like, awards. That's what it was. The, the awards. The awards. The the Sorry, guys. No, the, the, the morning. You can check the video out for the talent Sorry. show. <laughs> <laughs> I did the, the VIP. Fri Friday yeah, morning. Yeah, because the talent show is on the middle of the week. So that's why. Right. Right. Friday, yes. Friday morning. Um, so one of the things that Gaines will be doing throughout the week is a highlight video. Um, and sometimes some other things we're, we're talking through, yeah, like one yeah. year we, uh, last year all the kids did Disney skits, one year they made their own fun skits, oh, yeah. we had a Hollywood week where they created, and so we'll see what happens with that, um, but there will definitely be a highlight film, and so we invite all of you to come on that Friday morning to get a peek into the week, and usually we'll have, um, we'll have a couple campers speak about the week, and so it's a chance mm -hmm. for you to hear from all of us how wonderful the week was. Thank you guys. See, even I get things wrong sometimes. It's okay. <laughs> I'm just um, thinking, oh, don't get them excited. Right. No, don't get them excited. I, I, I'm sorry, guys. I got y'all hyped. I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, please, I've been checking off as they've come in, but if you have not yet um, filled out your scholarship forms um, and you requested one on your application, 
please fill them out so that we can get them in. Um, and also, please make sure that you're following up with your feeds if they're not already in. Uh, many of you have already done that stuff, so I just want to thank you all for just being very prompt. Um, and the rest of you guys, I know it's coming, so I'm just going to give you a little uh, reminder. Um, and I can shoot, a, I can shoot another email. Uh, and uh, Facebook group updates. I'm going to also give you guys this. On this sheet, there is three different links. The Facebook group, you can search EFEPA Camp Achieve. Every day, we're going to try to post pictures of your youth at camp. So you can see what's happening and you can feel secure, you know, because a lot of you guys in the room are first time parents and you also want to see how fun it is and what's happening and what's going on. So please make sure you uh, add us on Facebook and I'll have two other links on here, which is our Amazon wish list and our Oriental Trading wish list. Basically, our wish lists are only are things that um basically donated to us in kind. So um, sometimes when people get a scholarship, they may feel like, you know what, I want to, because I got the scholarship for camp, I may just want to like send camp something, some type of activity or that's on the wish list or, you know, something they need like a battery or, I mean, there's so many different types of things on the wish list that we all need in the different departments for Camp Achieve. Um, so we just, we love to receive it. We've been getting so many. I know some of you in this room already have sent me and I've created like a list. So I make sure I send out thank you notes because it's really phenomenal to come to work and like an Amazon box comes and I'm like, oh my God, it's like Christmas. And no, it's not for me. I'm not the kid. But I don't know what it is. I get so excited when I see it. And it's like a little note. And I'm like, oh, that's so nice. You know? So, you know, we really appreciate it. And it really makes um, camp even more fun because there are days that it's, the weather is really bad. And so maybe the activity we have planned may not, you know, go through the way you want. And so having like little games, extra games, like little things, they all come in handy. So thank you again for uh, your support um, with the wish list. Um, and uh, parent meet and greet. Don't forget that Friday after camp, come through. 9, 9.30 to 10.30, closing ceremonies. I mean, it's going to be very special. Mm -hmm. And I think you'll be ready to receive your children back. By then, I'll be ready to you go. Yeah. I'm tired. Or you get rid of us getting back. <laughs> but you know, you know, guys, honestly, this year, I don't think I'm going to feel like that. Um, you know, just to be, a, you guys are personal with me. By sharing your kids with me, I'll be a little personal with you. Last month, I lost my brother. He passed away. He was 24 years old. So this summer, I get to have a lot more brothers and sisters to hang out with. Um, I, it, I need this. As much as they need this, they just don't know it. They won't know what's happening. They don't know what I'm going through. Um, but I am so appreciative to hang out with them because children make me laugh, they make me smile, mm -hmm. and just keep me very youthful. I mean, look at me, everlasting. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So, <laughs> um, I think I'm done. Just you want to come over and talk to medical talk? And also at the end, we'll come, we can bring another um, counselor in here, some of the counselors to share their experiences. Um, but right now, they're kind of watching the young people. So you guys, if you have any questions for them, I'll make sure they come in and we kind of meet them. Yeah. I have a question. Um, if, if the medication was added today, a new one, so should I just update it? Um, yeah, sure. Um, and you can call me tomorrow. I can update it. Yes, it's a new one. Yes. A, yes. That's fine. You can add that. Mm -hmm. Either one is so Sue's going to kind of get into this. We um, the, the site will kind of lock people out um, starting June 15th or July. I'm sorry, July 15th. So through then you can go back in and oh, make good. changes. Okay. If there are changes after that, you'll have to call us directly. But Sue's going to go through the medical registration because if something changes the week before camp and you're not able to get in touch with us. Right. We're going to review everything that day as well. So we yeah. make sure that everything that we have in our system matches what shows up at camp. So if there's a discrepancy, we'll, that morning we will um, make sure everything and same is correct. Food. My girl is vegetarian, so same okay. thing. I should just yes. right now. Okay. Please. Yeah. yeah, let us know. And there's always vegetarian options yeah. um, at every meal. And there's a salad bar as well that is pretty good. That's good. You can probably tell there's a lot of passion that goes into camp. <laughs> um, most of our counselors, as, as Ben Tuma said, do have epilepsy as well. And most of them have been with us a long time. They just keep coming back and coming back and, um, and know the routine and the protocols. And, um, and you can feel very good with them um, taking care of your kids as well as our, our medical staff. Um, <clears throat> Our medical professional team is made up of um, 
doctors and nurses from various neurology centers uh, throughout the state or throughout our area. Um, Dr. Valencia has been with us, like we said, for 11 years. Um, he, he not only comes to camp and, and helps us and enjoys us at camp, but he spends um, several days and, so, and a lot of time throughout the year um, planning and getting ready. We have a committee that's called the uh, Camp Achieve Medical Review Committee that reviews all of your, all of your applications and, um, and spends a lot of time um, making camp as safe as we can. Um, <clears throat> we have a minimum every day of about five health professionals on staff. Three of the, about three of them will stay every night. So um, your kids are in good hands. It, um, they are, we are also in touch with Grandview Hospital and Grandview response team so that they know we're gonna be there. They're all prepared for us. Um, we have in the past given them some, um, some education so they know a little more about seizures. But, um, but our medical team is superb. And, and I think pretty much everybody who's been who will be there this year has also um, been at camp for several years. And um, uh, just like our counselors, so once you have been to camp, you just want to come back and come back. It's, it's our medical team is like that too. And they have the same, the same passion that the rest of us have. Um, registration, medical registration. When you come in, you're gonna register at camp and, th and then you're going to go over to where our medical team is in different, we have different tables, and you will get a card with a number on it, and that will tell you the order, because we don't want anybody to get ahead of anybody else. But, um, but then you'll go up to a table where there will be two health professionals checking you in, and this is when we need to know everything. Um, any changes that have been made, any hospital visits, anything that has happened between the time that you have registered and, um, <clears throat> and the time that you come to camp. Um, you <clears throat> all of the medication information, uh, all of the medication has to be um, in, with the name on it, in a pill organizer, empty, an empty pill organizer. And this is important because you're, you and your child are going to be filling the the organizer for the week with the medical professional. If the pills are already in there, sometimes we don't know what's in there, um, and it's hard to tell, especially with the generics, everything looks different. Mm -hmm. so, um, so that will be done with the health professional. So bring an empty one. All the bottles should be the original medication bottles. Um, they, everything you bring, if you bring Claritin or Tylenol or anything that your child might need, that should have the name on it as well. And we will put these um, into plastic bags and hold on to them that way. Every, and, and I'm sure you read this over and over again, but every child that comes to camp needs to have a rescue medication. And I understand that some of you don't have rescue medications naturally, you don't need them, but camp is 20 minutes away from Grandview Hospital. And our medical staff, truthfully, is better prepared than the hospital is. So um, if, we have, if we have a rescue medication, we can eliminate the need to, to call out and have to go to the hospital. Um, Talia, she doesn't take pills, she takes um, well, those uh, powder packets. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yeah. So, um, what I could I provide well at home she does it you know she buys it she cuts it open do it mm -hmm. I mean, I, should I pack everything that I normally would pack like so I what does she um, yeah it would be helpful if you pack everything and does she does she put it in in water yeah, or does she put it in water so a little cup of disposable mm -hmm. cup we'll have that so yeah. the, okay we can I, have disposable all, cups things like that because she has yeah. to mix it in the, in the morning yeah. and the and that's so the kind of thing we really need know and you need to discuss you know when you check her in okay. because we will have that available we'll accommodate anything okay. that your child needs some 
kids will need to eat yogurt mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. with it just to get okay. it down or whatever. whatever yeah, no, I need. Need. like so when mm -hmm. I go home and pick like sometimes you want to. It would probably be helpful if there's a pair of scissors yeah. in there yeah. because okay. what will happen <laughs> if we use our scissors, they're going to go all over the place. But if we have them because it's every morning and we'll just have like, you know, to her name on it and make sure it stays I, with her. I, I want to make sure I'm just packing the right, because yes. I know sometimes, oh no, no scissors, the weapon. You know, so I like to make sure that they're right. Well, they won't be staying, they won't be staying with her. They'll be staying with us. <laughs> You know, I said, oh, yeah. I want to make sure that, because I know she, she won't, you know, need it because she doesn't take the right. right form. Okay. Right. So if a child takes, like, a powder, a yeah. liquid, a sprinkles, um, yeah. you know, hopefully you've indicated that, yeah. and that's another thing you'll go over at registration. Um, we try to keep some yogurt, applesauce, things like that. If your child's really picky, like, we had a kid who only took it with chocolate ice cream and we're like okay well we really can't provide chocolate ice cream for the entire week but can you bring that and the parents were fine with it and, and it worked so if there's something real specific communicate that with us and we'll we'll let you know if it's something that we can accommodate or if you need to bring that with you but make sure um, that, again that the name is on the pill organizers the the um, original bottles the rescue everything needs to be labeled Things like um, Vegas nerve stimulator, if they have one, the magnet needs to have their name on it. Um, it bring more than what you would bring for the five days we're there. Mm -hmm. Pack for a week, give us at least two extra medic pills of, of everything. Um, sometimes they drop, you know, sometimes things happen and, um, and we really need extras. And, at least two rescues. Um, if you think your child needs more than that, pack more than that. Okay, so meds are given at breakfast and dinner and any time in between. Any other time that your child needs medication, they will get it at that time. Um, it's really something to see. 70 kids get medications at the same time. Um, we do split them up a little bit, but we have two um, health professionals that are sitting there that, that do the whole routine and it's kind of one right after the other. They, um, they're, they're very good, they're very quick, um, but it is done carefully. It's extremely careful. Everything is into the computer and checked and, and the signature goes on there. Um, but morning meds are given, as Liz said, around 7 o'clock. We give evening meds um, right before the last activity, which is usually around 7 o'clock. We try to keep it um, every 12 hours. So, um, and our goal... Yeah. If your child peaks at a specific time, like mine's 8 and 8, mm -hmm. could he go at those times again? That's fine. You probably put him at the end of the line, and by the time it's okay. done... Okay. <laughs> 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 Sorry, end of the line. Of the line. Yeah, we actually had uh, somebody one year who took one pill at eight and one pill at eight twenty. You know, so it was okay. Go to the end of the line and come on. Over the <laughs> but um, we didn't quite understand that. But you know, doctors would be funny that way. <laughs> we also have something that we call self medicators. Now, all I'm going to say about this is if your child does not take their medicine by their, themselves at home. Do not check them off to be a self-medicator. That does not mean, however, that they're going to be just going in and taking their medicine themselves. They, um, they will be given their medication from a specific marked box. The nurses will be checking off as they take it. So this is, it's all supervised by staff. Um, however, it's just the beginning of a little bit of independence and a little bit of owning their epilepsy and being responsible. Um, but if they don't do that at home, please don't um, check them off because that gets a little, a little too complicated then. Was that on the on the website to check off stuff? I don't recall seeing yeah. So that is on. So that authorization is once the child's accepted. It's right. one of the new ones that that pop yeah. up. I don't recall seeing that. Okay. Yeah, I just didn't mind today. Yeah, I didn't mind yesterday. Yeah. 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 Y
much. If they are going to be self-medicators, like she fills her pill container at home by herself, and then I usually check it. Will she fill that pill container when she registers? So yes. it'll already be filled, and then it can be in the self-contained, and she'll go into it. Yeah, but she'll do that there in front of the, um, right. yeah. Okay. Okay, great. Um, I, like my do. son can do all that, like fill his pills, and he takes it himself, but he always forgets to take, like I, I'm always there to be like, it's time to take your meds. Yeah. That's why I was a little right. leery as yeah. to what to put, so I put no, and then I change it to yes today. Um, so my question is like, is there, are they going to be like, all right, it's medication time, go get it. No, go get it it's yourself. like, no. it's, it's really, really, it's not, it's, it's, we, so basically we will be saying it's medication time and everybody goes up together. What we do is, um, so we have two locations. So, um, you know, a certain number of the cabins, usually the little, you know, the young kids will be assigned to one location, the older kids will be assigned to another location, and we'll call them cabin by cabin. And so it's like, it's really hard to, for a kid to forget, and if for some reason he was like, oh, I don't take meds at this time, our nurses know, and okay. they'll go, oh, wait a second, you know, who did we miss? You know, they'll go down the list and they'll, they'll see who okay. they missed. And make sure. So, um, so when we say take it by yourself, like that's you know, yeah, they might need a reminder of the time. But if they can yeah. fill it, they know what they take, oh, yeah. or they know okay. what the pills look like at what time oh, yeah. of day that they're taking. Yeah, that yeah. we do, you know, we want to help them maintain that independence. Okay. Because I was like, mm, I didn't know what. Yeah. And and the other and thing is really that we do, and um, Ignacio, you maybe can speak a little bit more to this, but we do. Um, kind of ask you again at registration so if you're like okay. still on the fence and not sure we can always change it when you get okay. to registration okay. I have a question my daughter takes liquid medication mm -hmm. you syringe she can do it but sometimes she's a kid she spilled so do you consider this can be because of self medication or what would you prefer <laughs> uh, normally I Put you pull the syringe and then she hand her the in. syringe. Yes. So I would probably call that, we, we probably wouldn't put her as a self-med mm -hmm. because we're going to have the nurse actually pull the medication. Yeah. So okay. she's going to have to stay there, you know, right there. The nurse will pull it and give it to her. Okay. Got it. So just, I'm, I'm just trying to, because my daughter, like, she gets her pills, she goes to the table, she puts them all in her mm -hmm. organizer. When she has to go take her medicine, so she will walk into a building. Yep. So yeah, here we can walk up to a box that will have yeah. her. No. So I'm I'm the nurse. Up. I'm the nurse right here. I'm sitting here and um, okay. So so here. Walk up. <laughs> Ready. So hi. Oh Sue. Oh my goodness. It's so good. How was your night? How'd you sleep? I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we have. So I'm gonna turn. singing outside my camera. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna on the computer. I'm pulling up her record. I'm gonna go pull this. I see Sue's a self -medica uh, medicator. I have my, um, her bag. I'm gonna check Sue Livingston. I'm gonna say, hey, let me see your bracelet. I'm check her name, birth date, matches everything. Hand this and say, okay, here, here are your medications. So she's gonna step to the side, take her medications, and I'll probably take the next kid up, and then she'll give me back. Okay. Good. Okay. Yeah. Good. So they're not going to just go rummaging around. Well, that's why I wasn't sure. Yeah. Like, she really oh, yeah. can self medicate herself. Yeah. But right. I'm the same yeah, way. Yeah, I have yeah, to remind yeah, her to go get it. Yeah. 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 If she's just going to be in a position where she's going to be handed her bag, set to the side, take it, and hand no, it back. No. no. That's okay. No. It's it's all supervised. Okay. So if they're not a self medicator, right? Is the so nurse if they're not a, a if they're the not a self med, then I would say okay, it would basically be the same. But I would grab the pill container. I would have like a little Dixie cup. I'd say, okay, it's the morning meds. I would take the meds, put, well, not me, because I'm not the nurse, but um, put them in there. And, and I'd probably say, hey, Sue, you know, what, what do you take in the morning? And try to do a little bit of education with her on what she's taking, chat with her as she's taking it, chart it, all of that. Perfect. Thank you. You mentioned a bracelet. So are they wearing a bracelet? Oh yeah. So all of us, even us, everybody wears a bracelet with their with their name and birth date. And allergies. Any allergies? And, yeah. Okay. And allergies. So like a hospital bracelet? Mm -hmm. It's kind mm -hmm. of like it. It's like a, it's it's like a plastic, like a thick plastic thing. Mm -hmm. that okay. Yeah. 
Because my son has a road ID. Uh huh. Because he runs. So I was going to send that on him, which has all his information. But if he has that, then there's no need for the other thing. Right. Perfect. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Um, I didn't realize I've been there for 11 years. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. But uh, definitely, Sue and Liz and now being to deserve more credit than I do. Sometimes when there's a, a case that they need a little guidance, they might contact me, but I don't spend as many days as she says. I've been treating epilepsy for more than 20 years. Um, how many of you have a nurse or a doctor sleep in the living room? So many <laughs> I think, I mean, I always felt like really camp is even safer than at home. I mean, you have something at home, you'd be calling 911. We have the nurses, doctors there staying overnight to tend the kids. And, and most of the times, um, we can take care of it in, in, um, at camp. Uh, really, rarely we had to go to the hospital. And one of those times, actually, the child hadn't had a seizure for many, many years and didn't have emergency medicine. And that comes back to us wanting to have those rescue medicines because when it happens, it happens. These kids are running around and even though we encourage them to drink plenty of fluids, it's hot outside, we hope we have the fantastic weather. We're being praying for good weather for the last few weeks. <laughs> <laughs> but um, sometimes it's too hot. I remember a year or two ago like when I was giving the talk and the and the glow, I was like in a, in a zone, I was so hot in the shade even. But anyway, so sometimes the kids may have more seizures than what they had in the past, and that's one of the reasons. Um, we do have the carts around, uh, professional drivers, including two here. <laughs> um, we have, for me, for the medical staff, we have uh, times where we're really, really paying a lot of attention. One of them for me is the pool time. Uh, you can imagine we uh, divide the kids and we don't put all the seven tickets in the pool. They don't even fit in there. <laughs> so we, we stagger them in the pool and we have count. Besides the camp having their own um, counselors, the, the kids that come from Britain, that uh, they're lifeguards and such, and I think we do coach them and teach them a little bit about seizures. We have also outside of the pool, we have counselors, we have counselors inside the pool, medical personnel surrounding the pool were like this. And um, I'm not gonna lie, seizures have happened in the pool. We don't, we don't heal people yelling or anything like that, we just pull the kids out. Uh, we have people inside the pool, so it's usually not a, not a major issue. And, and let me just add to that. We do train their counselors, the camp counselors, before we come up. Um, the kids will always be with our counselors as well, but they do run the activities. So we do give them a seizure training, and we do a special training for the lifeguards as well. One, um, Seamus, who's, who's looming over there, is, is one of our life, he's a certified lifeguard, and he'll help us with the training every, every year. The other activities, I guess, uh, that carry, a, I guess, some risk would be the canoeing that they do, and we have somebody, if everybody's wearing a vest, and we have somebody in the canoe, or every canoe that doesn't have epilepsy. So in case they can ju jump in, hold them, or, or do anything like that. And uh, the only one I guess is jump ropes, and the, the uh, ropes, yeah. the climbing wall, or not? Uh, the yes. Climbing yeah. wall, but there, of course, everybody's wearing a harness. Besides that, uh, the same as my patients, I want uh, the kids that have epilepsy to live as normal life as they can, and enjoy the week as they, they would on any other camp. Uh, when we have the parents coming to deliver the kids, of course, from you, they're very happy, but the parents usually leave happier. <laughs> like they have a week of a break and they have a, a little... Four more. For, me, for some it will be the first time, but uh, we have this camp where they, we know that they come every year. You can see their smile. They have like four kids. <laughs> it's like, oh my goodness. It's like, All right. really awesome. Um, questions for the medical part? Anything? I do have one more question. Okay. Should we pack like Tylenol for headaches or is that something that you guys have available? Like, okay. Yeah, and uh, there's a, a form on the uh, online, mm -hmm. whether you're authorized to use okay. things like that, uh, burns, Tylenol, ibuprofen, mm -hmm. uh, headaches calm, we would log that in okay. and tell you at the end of the week, uh, but we're not gonna call you for a minor headache or a bruise or something like that. If somebody requires to be in the hospital, we'll, you'll get a call. Okay. Yes. And you're not gonna get a call for every seizure. So one of the um, one of the really 
nice features of this camp doc system that you all have been using is that our medical team can log health incidents. So they can log bumps and bruises as well as seizures. And then what um, we do is we print that out at the end of the week and give that to the parents mm -hmm. so that you have a record, we have a record, and we can review anything with you of importance. Mm -hmm. And then it's also really good because I'm sure all of you, when you go to your doctor's appointments, are keeping a log mm -hmm. and telling your doctor, well, you know, you're not with your kid for that week, and I'm sure you ask them, did you have any seizures? They're gonna be like, uh, did I? <laughs> so um, you can have as, as good of a log as we can keep. I'm sure there's probably some, you know, absence seizures, myoclonic seizures, uh, partial seizures that we're not catching because they're happening, happening quickly. Uh, but our, our counselors are good about alerting us to things that happen in them. Definitely anything that requires uh, medical attention, we are logging into that system and we'll be giving you that information. Um, so guys, last but not least, I can, I, can I do one more medical thing? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> not last but not Sorry. least, guys. Sorry. One more medical thing, and, and I will be sending out an email. Um, I think we kind of mentioned it briefly. It's a hot topic mm. of the decade, it feels like now. Um, we talk about this every year um, as Pennsylvania law continues to um, change and evolve the guidelines, but medical marijuana. Um, so we've been carefully monitoring this and um, we really understand that a lot of you are probably working with your neurologist to see if this is a possibility for your child um, and you know we are advocates of expansion of proven treatments for people with epilepsy we're in a very difficult position right now because the state and federal law is at odds so because of the fact that uh, marijuana is still Schedule I um, and we have to protect the foundation and um, the licenses of the doctors and nurses, we are unable to store or dispense uh, medical marijuana. Um, so <laughs> it kind of puts us in a difficult position. If your child is in a clinical trial, we will follow the clinical trial guidelines um, and if, I, I think there were very few who were, um, but you know, for some reason you were like, oh, I didn't tell, if you didn't tell us, probably the neurologist did, and we've already been in communication um, about that. Um, if your camper has um, a safe haven letter or you have caregiver status, they're gonna be sending out these patient authorization letters. Let, um, let us know as soon as possible because um, the state did give us some guidance on potential options and we'll talk um, about that with you. If you, if you were outside of Pennsylvania and have, and your, you, you, your child has a medical uh, marijuana ID card, unfortunately Pennsylvania does not have reciprocity, so we're unable to make any accommodations in that um, situation. Um, and so we're kind of, it's hard to say this because we understand that this is a treatment that's being overseen by neurologists um, and that it's something that we we applaud the efforts that um, you know that the community is taking to learn more and to provide options for kids who don't respond to other treatments, but we need to protect the livelihood of the volunteers such as um, Dr. Valencia who are coming and who um, could have their license be put at risk if they are storing or dispensing this because of the disconnect between the federal law and the state law. So I just needed to get that out. <laughs> just as an aside, yes, we this is just a little thing. We just got back from Colorado. What a difference! Yeah, I mean, everywhere you go, there's you know, it's yeah. it's just amazing it, how it, it different. Is the same thing with CBD oil. So is hemp oil? so hemp oil, CBD oil. That's a that's. It's a little bit of a tricky um, situation because that is, um, if you're not getting it from a dispensary, like if you're buying it online, if you're getting it from a health food store, um, you don't need a card. And it, it's one of those that we haven't been able to make a huge determination because in the eyes of the law, like it's kind of considered similar to a vitamin. Mm -hmm. But 
it's still technically not federally legal because hemp and marijuana are considered are the same thing. Mm -hmm. It's really just semantics. Mm -hmm. I guess I have kind of a medical question. Um, my daughter has abs on seizures. And one of my concerns with sending her to camp was the possibility of her seeing a grand mal seizure. Mm -hmm. Her father has grand mal seizures, but she's never seen him have one. And I guess I'm concerned. I know that child having that seizure is going to be the, the focus, but how do counselors, maybe the not question. in the middle of it, handle the other children that or are seeing this maybe for the first time are scared, confused, mm -hmm. you know, hoping question. they're okay. Yeah. The, you know. the first thing that we do is with, with the kids is an orientation. And Dr. Blunt, I didn't ask you if you're going to do it this year or not. He talks, we have a short video that we show yeah, them with different seizures. types of seizures on it. Yeah. And um, he talks about different kinds of seizures, and you're going to see some of this and some of that, and some kids won't have any. Um, they go back to their cabins and they talk amongst okay, themselves. Okay, because I know she would probably have questions. Yes. And, and also, and we will teach them yeah. what to do in case of a seizure and during mm -hmm. that little brief, sometimes mm -hmm. like an hour, yeah. because then they, they want to ask all the questions. But we'll teach them what to do with the seizure, how to handle it, uh, how to help out, because they mm -hmm. might be the ones who are there. It's likely right. that they will see yeah. seizures during the, the week. And that, that was one of the things I said to her. You might see something that kind of scares you, but run to an adult, go get a counselor, yeah. go, you know, get help kind of a thing. But I just don't know and, how is she going to be. And, and let me just say this, that most of the time, because it's handled calmly and it's, it's not a, an ordeal, um, the kids kind of look over there and say, oh, that's it? That's what my mother worries about, you know? It's like, <laughs> not an idea. Um, not yeah, always. So, I mean, sometimes <laughs> their kids <laughs> get really scared and yeah. we're there well, for right. them. But Seamus, I love yes. this because sure. you as having, Seamus has been at camp since he was 10 years old, 11, 11 years, mm. 11 yeah, years old. This big. So, <laughs> so <laughs> you, sure you know, you was. went <laughs> from kind of that kid who was probably seeing seizures for the first time and how counselors and now being a counselor who addresses that. So I'd love your... So yeah, I've been, I was diagnosed when I was eight years old. So I never had to see my own seizures. My parents always saw it, but I was more insulated from the community until I was 10 when Sue, I was introduced to Sue and then when I was 11 I went to camp. So the first time seeing one, I don't really remember it and that's probably a good thing. Um, because I've, and because I've been with the foundation for so long, I'm more, it's like it's, doesn't phase me anymore, mm -hmm. but um, I view uh, uh, one of the campers seeing a seizure as actually a good thing. It makes everybody realize I'm not the only one that has that, mm -hmm. and now I know what I look like when I have a seizure, mm -hmm. and maybe they'll understand why that you guys are probably all warriors. Um, I get it, my mom's a warrior too, even though I don't live with her anymore. <laughs> That's why she works. Yeah. <laughs> um, um, but no, it's, it, it brings the community closer together in a way. Um, and we deal with it very calmly. We act like it's not a big deal because in reality it's not. It's just a common thing that they can't do. If you're scared your kid's going to see a seizure, that's going to be a given that they most likely will. Mm -hmm. um, and we won't let them panic if they have questions. We answer them. Every counselor knows. Most, a large majority of the counselors have epilepsy and can answer almost every question they have. Um, even the ones that don't have epilepsy know enough that they can answer the questions. So we deal with it as calmly as possible, so it's not a really big deal. So it's not, it shouldn't be a concern. One of the things we really encourage the counselors to do, and that's one of the reasons for that, having that like kind of three to one ratio, is that, you know, we don't need four people standing around one person having a seizure. You know, you can have one person protecting their head, you know, if somebody's having a tonic-clonic seizure, you know, you have one person protecting their head, starting to time, another person's on the walkie-talkie. Well, all those other people can say, okay, you know, little, little Janie's having a seizure, the rest of us, um, you know, Monica and Bintu are, I don't know, I'm just throwing out names here, <laughs> are going to, are going to, are, are taking care of her, and we're going to just step over here to the side and... You know, maybe you continue the activity or maybe they answer some questions depending on, I think our counselors are really good about reading the kids and knowing, I mean, because sometimes the kids are like, oh, it's handled and they just want to keep doing what they're doing and other times they're very concerned and they have some questions and they need to be answered. And 
Please. I'm sorry. One quick thing. One thing um, she'll never have to worry about though is having to run find a counselor. Yeah, because we're, there's always, always we're a gonna counselor. be around. It's yeah. right there's there. Gonna be one probably three yeah. feet away. It's just time. always that teaching her. You know, when you yeah. see trouble, hear trouble, yeah. something doesn't look right from an adult yeah. kind well, of. Well, yeah. yeah. like, yeah. the one thing um, I like to push with most of my campus is don't panic. Like, don't act like it's a big deal. Just say, hey, this person looks like they're gonna have a seizure. They are having a seizure. Mm -hmm. All right, and then we go deal with it. Mm -hmm. And it's a very calm thing. Having everybody get riled up over something that should be small isn't the best idea. When they were talking earlier about preparing for camp, that's one of the things that we've done is I've gone on YouTube and found the different types of seizures, especially mm -hmm. the one that my daughter has, and she's watching the videos so yeah. that she's prepared and has seen it, and we've talked about what's yeah. happening. And yeah. mm -hmm. I'll be honest, um, she started last week doing it with her psychologist because she suffers from a lot of anxiety with the seizures. Um, and as she's watching them, her, her anxiety level goes way down. So I think that's been a good way to help prepare her so that she understands. Um, I will be careful with the videos on YouTube, not many of you know, might not be what they say they are. Right, well that's what her psychologist started, started yeah. us doing. So mm -hmm. that's, and I, you know, we preview it before we show it to her. Okay, good. Okay. Yes. Um, just in response to that, I had the pleasure of, um, my daughter didn't go to camp last year, but we visited for a day, and I saw this exact team respond. I, I think when I was there throughout the day, I'm going to say like 20 kids came in the door and all had seizures throughout the day, and I just kept myself kind of in the corner. It was, it was a really hot one, but um, I will say that I saw this exact team, aside from been to respond exactly like that. Like They're not just downplaying it for us, and I'm, I'm just saying that as a parent. I, my daughter has never witnessed it either. Um, she's the only one that has epilepsy. She doesn't know anybody else with epilepsy. That was my fear. She mm -hmm. has anxiety. She has complex partial seizures. They're staring episodes. And in a, in a crowded room, nobody knows. And so for her to go into this environment that I thought she, I thought she was going to watch kids just drop and not know what to do, and then not have a filter and say things that would be hurtful or judge, and I didn't know how to prepare her for that because... And I'm giving her information that I don't know if it's accurate to the people around her. Mm -hmm. So I was scared. And, and I'll say I, I sat there as scared. But watching the way they respond, it is a matter of fact. It is an issue. It is They absolutely deal with it as medically necessary. Mm -hmm. But it is a part of their day. And they all move on. Like, I, I, Seamus, I, I saw you with another counselor at one point that went yeah. down. And... You were so kind and understanding, and then you handled your group, and they were like, okay, y'all right? Okay. And then they just moved on. And me, I wanted to cry and hug them. And that would be me. Yeah, yeah because, but that's not, and that wasn't, I had to understand that that wasn't my place, but as a mom, I was fighting all of those feelings. And I watched my daughter not be scared. So I think that was a gift, and I, that's why I feel so lucky to be welcomed into this environment, because... I know all of you probably have the same, we're on doctor's appointments and anxiety and what yeah. do we prepare for? And yes, we can pack, but you can't pack for anxiety. I, can't, I know what I'll, how I'll handle it, but mm -hmm. they do. Like this is probably, my daughter's never slept out anywhere other than my parents' house. Uh, I, she just never has. So looking at the staff and knowing that they're going to be the ones when she wakes up probably having a seizure and nobody else is gonna know it, telling her it's okay to tell them, that's my, that's, what I have to prepare for her for, mm -hmm. but knowing that it's them, I feel comforted. And yeah. so I, if I can offer anything from that other side, they really, they do get it. And yeah. I've never met anybody else that got it. And I think that's what's really special about this group. Well, that goes into another thing I was gonna say. I know with epilepsy comes some anxiety for kids, some depression, mm -hmm. some more than others. I had lived through it, I still sometimes do. Um, and people not understanding, so they have a lot of fear. And I had that going into this camp. And trust me, when you you pick up your kid, um, your respective children, hopefully the right ones. <laughs> <laughs> on Friday, their um, the amount of anxiety that they will have will actually be significantly dropped for a while. Um, I made friends that lasted for life, and I'm still here 11 years later, doing uh, more than my fair share. Some sometimes. Um, so yeah, it's it, it's a tight knit group. It's very accepting. Um, so I know a lot of you are probably still scared. And I'm not really. I'm, I know it's not going to be better until you actually pick your kids up on Friday. 
Um, but my mom was probably the most anxious person dropping me off. She cried the entire week I was there. <laughs> I'm not kidding. I actually had her, I had, she actually dropped something off for me that I forgot middle of the week and got upset that I didn't want to say hi to her. <laughs> um, so you, your kids won't miss you, you will miss them. Um, but the following year, she kicked me out the door and went to Sue and said, all right, how fast can I get them out? <laughs> so trust me, it's, it's, there's nothing to be afraid of. Yeah. I have a question. I know during the day there's counsel with this doctor there. What about at night? Yeah. Night, so counselors, there will be at least three counselors in the cabin, sometimes more, with them all at 24-7 there will be. But when she has seen it, there's no sound. We'll How, be there to respond. What kind of monitoring system do you have? Oh, well we, we have um, a nurse, um, two nurses and a medical professional on call, so we have walkie talkies. No, the thing is, she's 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 like, she like, 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 she sleeps. Like, she sleep. she sleep, everybody sleeps. She's heavy seated, there's no sound. Unless you're watching her. How do you know she's heavy seated? How do you know? Because yeah. 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 I watch her sleep. Yeah. Yeah. All night? Uh, Not all night. This now happened within like the first half hour. So if she. Counselors will usually stay up until all the campers are asleep for yeah. a significant yeah. amount of time yes. before the camp campers fall asleep because I know most seizures, we all know most seizures happen while they're falling asleep. Yeah. That's just the nature yeah, of yeah, them. Yeah, it's, 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 and document it with, uh, with yes, situations like, yeah. like that when we know, um, I'm assuming you and your doctor documented that our seizures occur at night, mm -hmm. yeah. um, we'll try to put kids who have nocturnal seizures in the bed right next to a counselor so that right. you know yes she might not be making any vocal noise yeah. but she's moving yeah so that um and our counselors sleep with i swear they sleep with one eye open we, barely sleep. <laughs> we will know and so we they um and yeah. so and then the other thing that depending you can let us know we've done in the past with kids who have more violent seizures mm -hmm. um we will try to pad around okay their bed as well like we try to bring some things that we can um we can kind of you know can use duct tape and wrap and, and make the beds as safe as possible yeah. there have been kids who have violent nocturnal seizures where we'll take their mattress and put their mattress on the floor okay. um but you know i can't guarantee that you know we'll hear everything but um we do our best but we don't hear it at night either at home. Sometimes we just don't hear it, you know. It, you know but transition and so, right. Home, so it's but the they're fine thing. in the morning, right? Yeah. In the morning, she well, like half hour before she wakes up, she gets she has about seven, eight seizures. But you know, and then before she goes that's, to sleep, that's something she that has like seven, eight seizures as well. But very quick, but very like thirty. I would say maybe like ten seconds each. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like but it's something that we see all the time. But yeah. there's, there's no reason yeah. to be worried. There's right. nothing that we haven't it seen. All, every day, yeah. like, really, you know, so, every single night, every single day. If they happen in their sleep, sometimes I know you guys probably don't notice everything. So I no, no. watch your children twenty four seven. Yeah, yeah. I try. But if they do happen in their sleep, we we do sleep very lightly, so we will hear any like the small noise. And the medical team, medical team, doesn't sleep at all. No, medical team sleeps even less than we do. And our goal is that, um, you know, that if, that we're also training our counselors that, you know, Catherine doesn't look quite right this morning. You can see. You can see the difference. Yeah, you can see. Yeah, yeah. And that they're noticing oh, yeah. that and they're communicating that with the medical team. And that, okay, you know, Catherine maybe might, you know, maybe we didn't catch something and we got to keep a closer eye on her today. Yes, yes. And I, I would say, too, even the other campers. Though, that is true. Other, so yeah, other you, you've got a lot more eyes than you think because other campers have woken, uh, woke me up to point out uh, a camper. Um, so, I mean, you've really got, it, it's a very tight-knit group, and you've got everyone looking out for everyone. Um, so, it, it's just eyes everywhere. So, yeah, and just within like the first, I say six hours, and I'm being very generous at the number, it's probably shorter. We figure out, we all, we all figure out that your, your children's quirks and everything that they are, so we can tell when they're off and everything, because we deal with the same thing, we know when we're off, so it, it does translate. And, 
while we're all different, we all experience our epilepsy differently, we all experience the same. So it's very easy. It's easier for us to, to tell when they're not okay. And just one thing, we did mention, we talked about the heat, and one year we did have horrible bad, bad. hot. Only heat. one year? It <laughs> <laughs> was, was raining, yes. hot. But we did our best to keep them cool. We have that one air-conditioned room that we used um, <coughs> when we could for, um, for activities. When we could bring them in there, we did. And we ran the sprinkler a lot, put them in the pool. We, um, had, we um, ordered... <coughs> Last year, one of the big items on our Amazon wish list was cooling towels, and um, we got a lot of them. <coughs> Sue took them all and washed them after camp, and you know, where they're all ready to go. And that's a really, it's, we we found that to be really helpful for the kids who are sensitive to heat. Because <coughs> you have kids who are sensitive to heat, and who you're like, you know, maybe you need to step off the Gaga court, and they're like. No, I'm at camp. I gotta just keep <laughs> going. <laughs> and our our nurses, I think, do a good job, and our counselors too, of trying to encourage kids to take breaks. And and it's one of the reasons why we have some of those things built into the schedule as well to say, all right, this is free time, and this is free time where everybody's just gonna take it easy. We're not gonna be out playing a raucous game of basketball or Gaga. Or, um, it's really, you know, we all we all need that time to cool ourselves down, and 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 that's when there's. It's fun because sometimes you're not even having deep conversations about seizures, but it's a time when the kids really get to know each other. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we do spend during the year our our during the week. Um, <laughs> <laughs> our, I don't know. I don't know anything about that. <laughs> But um, our medical team does spend time talking, um, answering medical questions, or talking about their medications, what they might feel when they take it, or how they feel. Um, they learn, we really, without them knowing it, um, they get educated on their medications and everything about themselves, but they also learn that it doesn't define who they are. They can swim, they can go boating, they can climb walls. Um, Sometimes they make us climb walls, but you know. It's, <laughs> but they um, they learn a lot, and they learn how to talk to other people about their epilepsy too, which I think is is very valuable for them. So. We have one question. Um, as far as the day when we drop them off, mm -hmm. um, I know that we go through medication uh, things, but do we set up their bunk, or is that something they do? So really, that's up to you. Okay. If you um, if you want to help, so what how how what happens is um, and actually because we've increased, there'll probably be two different places that you'll be directed to park. Initially, we ask that you leave your bags in the car, and so you, your camper, the medication comes down to what we call the globe, and we'll have lots of people directing you around. You'll go through the registration process where they'll get their you know their camp T-shirt. Uh, any paperwork, their bracelet, they'll, you'll sit down with the medical team, have the lice check. Once all that's done, um, we have uh, volunteers that are around to help get the supplies to the cabin. Now there's some families where the parent likes to really help get the kids set up. There's other times the kids like, get out of here, I can set my own bed up, <laughs> and our counselors help, will, will help with that. So okay. really, we like to get parents out kind of as quickly as possible to, so that kids can start interacting with each other and with the counselors, mm -hmm. but we know that, especially for the younger campers, um, they might need the parent to help set stuff up. We, um, it's in the packing list. Um, it get, can get really hot in the cabins if we get one of those weeks where it's 90 degrees in the shade. And so we encourage you to, to bring a small fan with an extension yeah. cord. Those are things that uh, a parent probably needs to help, but ca our counselors can do that as well. Like a small stand fan or? What's the yeah, like a small <laughs> like a table fan. It's like a table fan, yeah. yeah. It's a small table yeah, fan. Small okay. table fan. One okay. thing I think they haven't mentioned that um they will give you a home we think we say what a staggering the time. Oh, You'll get a, a notice oh, yes. yeah. We, yeah. a time to come in. We yes. have usually between four and five registration stations. Each of the stations okay. has two medical personnel on each station. 
Mm -hmm. So they'll give you a time, you come between 9 and 9.30 nine or right. something, we stagger uh, all the campers for the morning. We cannot have 70 people at the same time, plus the families. Right. Yeah. So registration so, starts at, we register nine. people like from 9 to noon, but if everybody shows up at 9, there's going to be a lot of people sitting and waiting. So, um, you know, will, Sue, yeah, goes, Sue goes emails. through the list and kind of divides up by, you know, how many A's do we have, how many B's, C's, and... <laughs> we kind of try to make it as even as possible and spread it out yeah. through the day. Now, if you get a time and you're like, you know what, I'm coming from really far away, I'd rather leave early so that I'm not hitting midday traffic, we can make adjustments. But we do like you to let us know that so that we can adjust accordingly. Okay. All right. Yeah. Thank you guys so much. Before we go tonight, question again was email. Yes, email me, call me.